everyone. Uh, so this video is going to be us continuing to talk about limits in R3. Uh, so we've got some functions of two variables that we want to find the limit of. Um, so maybe we've got uh, f of x, y equals, uh, the first one I want to go over is x to the fourth minus 4y squared divided by x squared plus 2y. And if we want to find the limit, um, so we might ask the question, uh, is this, uh, is f continuous at the point 0, 0? <clears throat> uh, so the definition for continuity is that we have the limit agreeing at a particular point. Um, but what I mentioned last time was that uh, there's many, many different paths that we can take um, to reach that point. <clears throat> and proving that the limit exists, um, if we can't directly substitute it into this, um, we're going to have to show um, not just uh, the left and right, but also uh, from up and down and just these infinite number of directions. Um, so probably what we'll end up doing is uh, showing that this limit doesn't exist uh, because there'll be some disagreement between these limits. Uh, so the first thing we should always try, uh, so we'll say first try uh, direct substitution. Um, that is to say, if we want to find the limit as x, y approaches 0, 0 of x to the fourth minus 4y squared divided by x squared plus 2y, um, that is going to be equal to, <clears throat> um, if we just try to plug this in here, 0 minus 0 over 0 plus 0. We get 0 over 0, so that's an indeterminate form. And um, just a reminder that indeterminate form does not mean that the limit doesn't exist. right? Um, we can't say that it does or does not exist. It's indeterminate. We can't determine that yet. Um, so say no conclusion but I will say for this class if there's um, if it's indeterminate then you're probably going to have to uh, show that the limit doesn't exist all right because the three options are it works through direct substitution you can prove the limit exists second option is we're going to disprove it by having some kind of disagreement and the third option would be checking those infinite number of paths on there so uh, because we don't expect you to know how to prove that mathematically, um, it's going to be one of those two uh, first two options. Okay, uh, so the next thing to try is going to be um, to try and take some paths along here. So here's one path that we can try. We can try kind of along this path. If this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis, then uh, what we're doing here, if we want to kind of restrict it to this path, is we're going to set y equal to 0. Uh, so um, we're going to set y equal to 0. And it's not the limit as it approaches 0. We're setting it equal to 0. Um, and that's going to give us the limit as just x now approaches 0 of x to the fourth minus, well, this y is 0, uh, divided by x squared plus 0. Um, here, when you get an indeterminate form, um, you might think that you can use uh, L'Hopital's rule. Um, but the question for L'Hopital's rule, you know, that's taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom um, to try and get a better equation to work with. 
but um, this fraction, you kind of have to ask yourself the question, should I be taking the derivative with respect to x or the derivative with respect to y? Um, and it turns out that neither of those are really going to be the answer here. Um, so we can't use, uh, can't use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, so we can't use L'Hopital's rule, but here we can. Here we can, right? So um, this is just me saying um, by L'Hopital's rule, um, this is going to be equal to, let's see, 0 over 0, so x squared. And that's just going to be 0. Um, again, that doesn't mean the limit exists and that it's 0. Um, it's just saying along this path, it seems like the limit is equal to 0. Um, the other line we can try, right, that's going to be this one, where we set x equal to 0. So that's going to be our limit as y approaches 0 now. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so that's going to be um, x is set equal to 0 now. So it's definitely going to be 0 minus 4y squared divided by 0 plus 2y. Uh, sorry, this should have a squared in here. Sorry about that. <clears throat> um, so this one, once we cancel that out, um, it, we can say this is going to be uh, negative 2 in that case. Um, we've already shown that the limit doesn't exist here, right? Because what we've said is that the limit along this path is equal to 0. The limit along this path is equal to negative 2. Um, so if we want to be really pedantic about it, we can say 0 is not equal to negative 2. Therefore, limit um, at... Um, zero, zero does not exist. And we can even take this conclusion even further and say that um, this means that um, f is not continuous. At zero, zero. Oops, sorry. Um, now, the question that I want you to consider um, with this is, um, suppose, so let's look at this, we'll say suppose um, these two limits did agree. So maybe we got um, negative 2 here and then negative 2 here. Um, the question I want to ask is, does that mean that the limit exists? Um, have we proven that the limit exists here? And the answer is no, we haven't, um, because these only represent two paths that we could have taken right, to reach that point. So we still have this one, this one, you know, a lot of different paths to consider. So um, um, we can say here that we still we still haven't shown that the limit exists. Okay. Uh, let's look at another example, um, just so we're working with, um, you know, zero over zero and like zeros and things approaching zero. Um, so I just want to look at one more example that kind of goes over that. And we can talk about um, different types of problems that you can see that are in the same, um, uh, same kind of category. So 
I'm going to ask, um, is uh, G continuous? At the point uh, zero, zero. given g of x and y is equal to um, xy over x squared plus y squared. Oh, now my video is being ruined by my own vanity. I'm needing to see my face. Okay, is g continuous at the point zero, zero? Uh, given that equation, that's a y squared. Uh, let's find out. So we'll try direct, uh, direct substitution. x, y, 0 over 0, indeterminate. So uh, no conclusion there. Uh, we can try that line. Um, x equals 0. So if x equals 0, then we're looking at the limit as y approaches 0. Uh, so that's going to be, all right, so x is actually equal to 0, so that's going to be uh, 0 times y divided by 0 plus y squared. Um, I'll save the computation for a little later. Uh, x equals 0, so that's going to be, um, let's see, yeah, y is approaching 0, right? So if I set y equal to 0, that's going to be x times y, and then um, x squared, oops, y is 0. Um, so it seems like both of these um, are going to be equal to each other. Um, again, I just want to remind you that y is approaching 0, so it is some number, right? Um, but 0 times some number is 0. 0 plus some number squared is going to be some number, so it's not 0 divided by 0. We do actually get um, some value there, uh, so that is going to be 0. Uh, same with this one. 0 over some number is going to be equal to 0. And we have agreement here between these two. Um, so that means that we're going to um, not draw a conclusion yet, but it seems like so far that these two limits agree. Um, but we have to keep going, right? There's an infinite number of paths that we have to take. So one last path that we can try um, is this one right along here. So it passes through the point 0, 0, and that's going to be the line y equals x. So if we set y equal to x, we get the same effect, right? Here we kind of got rid of a variable. We got rid of x or we got rid of y. Um, here we just get to combine x and y into one variable. So I'm going to choose to eliminate y. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of x times x divided by x squared plus x squared. That's going to be x squared over 2x squared. Again, we can use L'Hopital's rule or just inspection and say that's positive 1 half. So now we have a disagreement here, right? Like before we hadn't proved anything. We didn't show that the limit existed. Now we have this disagreement. Zero is not equal to one half. Therefore limit at zero, zero does not exist. And that means that um, function g 
is not continuous. Um, at zero, zero. Um, I will say that for most of the syllabus problems and um, a lot of work that you just do in general, um, these three lines are going to be sufficient, right? You can use these three lines and that'll kind of cover it. Um, you will find that inconsistency at some point along there. Um, if you don't, you really just need any path that is going to cross that point zero zero. Um, so something to think about might be, um, I asked if it was continuous at zero zero, but if I asked for the point one one, um, this would change to now you're looking for the line x equals one, y equals one, and thinking about maybe y equals uh, x plus one, or still y equals x, I guess, would work for that one, right? Um, so yeah, just kind of think about, um, you know, what paths cross that point. Um, uh, for here, you could use y equals x squared, right, as well. That's going to pass through the point one, one. Um, so yeah, I think these three paths should cover it. Uh, certainly know how to um, use those three. Um, but be open to different points, right? Recognize that different points are going to produce different lines and um, that there's other paths that you can take. All right, uh, so that's it for limits, and I'll be making a video on um, the next chapter, 14.3, which goes over partial derivatives, um, which is kind of the uh, basis for what we're going to do in the rest of the class, right? So we're in multivariable calculus. This is calculus for the first time proper.